And yes, you're right. Uh, right now, there are only three rather stable Muslim countries that you can call the castles of Islam, um, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Pakistan. But unfortunately, there's a lot of stuff happening uh, against these countries. And they themselves are making so many mistakes that it's getting worse day by day. And according to a hadith, we know that uh, it during the towards the end of the times uh, there would be the time when we would lose uh, can uh, Constantinople uh, that's uh, Turkey and there would be a very bad situation and uh, a very worse conditions uh, in in uh, Medina and Makkah too. So basically what we can, um, we can say based on these ahadiths that we would lose both Turkey and Saudi Arabia. There would be no hold of Muslims in these two countries. So you are right, um, there must be something uh, that needs to be done uh, to unite and strengthen these three countries including Pakistan. The first thing and the most important one is to be careful about with the tongues. That's the most important thing. And that is applicable to the people and most, more importantly to the important people, the influencers, the scholars, and the speakers, anchor persons, and the TV personalities, the politicians, leadership, everyone. Because right now there are a lot of things that are not perfect. There's a lot of stuff that's uh, happening in these countries that's against Islam and that's, that's causing a lot of hue and cry. But it's very important that we comply with the Islamic standard. We comply with the teachings of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no permission of dissent against Islamic governments. That's the worst thing that you can do to your own self, to your own communities, to your own country. If you involve yourself in conversations that lead to dissent or rebellion against your governments, then you are doing the worst thing against your own self, against your own countries. That's the, that's the thinking and the work of Khawarij the people who have no place in Islam. So, but then comes uh, the question that Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khatamun Nabiyyin, the last prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, taught us to Man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yugayyirhu bi yadi fa illam yastaghi fa bi lisani fa illam yastaghi fa bi qalbi that if any one of you sees, like it's not about anyone, if you see some munkarat happening, some things that are forbidden in Islam, then you stop it by your hand, with your hand. If you don't have the ability to do that, then you do it with your tongue. If you don't have the ability to do that, then you think of it like it's a bad thing in your heart. If you, if you think bad about that thing in your heart and there's no level of Iman after that but we have to be very careful that if everyone starts forcing people forcing their own thinking their own perspective of Islam and and virtue on others forcefully it's all fitna so the first part is only for the governments only governments must force um, the virtues, the force, the Sharia, the force, the law on the people. If the governments are not doing, it's not your, it's not a normal citizen's job to do that. The normal citizen's job is to do that with their tongue, stop people, tell people you know, what's right, what's wrong. But do not force your 
do not imply force on the people uh, when you want to stop them from uh, munkarat, from the bad things. And the third part is for the time of fitna. Because there are multiple ahadiths of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where we know that when Sahaba asked Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khatam al Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that what should we do in such a scenario in the time of fitan? Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said one should become the mat of his own house. That one should not leave the house, should not talk up to people about fitna, should not indulge himself uh, in fitna. And in other ahadiths tell us that one should just move to the mountains and have some goats rather than involving himself in fitna. So at the time of fitan, our responsibility is just is to just shut up and not talk about anything. Just be careful about yourself and uh, save your own iman. So, well, for example, what happened in um, Libya? It was such such a painful scenario. I happened to be the one watching all the news live back then and it was such an unfortunate situation that it was all dissent coming from the normal people that you call an Arab Spring apparently there were normal people but there were a bunch of kids shouting and causing dissent among people hue and a lot of hue and cry and chaos and like blaming the governments for the bad things I'm sure there were many bad things but this is no basis for dissent. There's no basis for a rebellion. But what happened eventually that it got so worse that it was chaos everywhere and fighting and fitna everywhere in Libya. And then the international media, so-called tycoons, big crocodiles, whatever you call them, they they brought some of those so-called young leaders on camera and promoted them even more. And they were able to manipulate them towards their own liking, towards the liking of the West. And finally, it was the situation that, that news must be available on the internet still, is that it was the Libyan people apparently that, who called that they needed NATO support over there against their own government because of all that dissent and rebellion and all that chaos and all that hue and cry what happened see whose government is there in Libya there's no government it's all fitna over there all killing people dying out of hunger Chaos, killing, murders, homicides. Why? Because the people, the Saturn made them think that they are doing the right thing by stopping the government and the people from doing the bad things. But they ended up in the worst of the worst conditions because they defied Allah's orders. They defied Allah's orders that you have to obey Allah, His Prophet, the last prophet and also the people who are ruling you the best you can do is you can tell them to do the right things in a very nice manner but you cannot rebel against them it's not allowed and and I, I took your question to a stretch but I think that's the best thing we can do because Right now, what I see is a lot of people to gain views and gain some attention and whatnot. They're talking about the bad things happening in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, you should talk about the bad things happening in Saudi Arabia especially. But you should not, you must not talk about those things in a fashion that causes dissent and, 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 and a sense of rebellion among the people. And Saudi Arabia is a very, very sensitive place. It's not like Turkey, it's not like, it's not like any other, it's not like Dubai, it's not like, like Pakistan. It's a very, very sensitive place. Suppose it's, a, it's, it's the situation of Hajj or Umrah. And a lot of people from all over the world are there and there's a 
sense of dissent, or a sense of rebellion against them, within them. And something happens over there, what would happen? It would be all fitna, all killing, and it would be very bad over there. So everyone opening their mouths, everyone talking about the scenarios over there especially, they must be very, 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 very careful. And they should, they rather must tell people to think of those things that bad, think of those things that the not the right things to do, but they sh should also, they must also tell people to never ever involve themselves in any form of fitna. This is the job of the government to cure those things, to fix those things, to not involve themselves in uh, things that are against Islam, but it is our job to make sure we cooperate with the governments uh, in terms of peace, in terms of uh, law and order. So that's the best thing that can be done at the time of fitna. This is the time of fitna. This is the time I'm forcing a lot of bad things that's, that, that I, 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 may Allah save us, that might happen very soon. So that's the best thing that we can do to strengthen our governments. Because in our attempt to fix our own governments, in an attempt to secure the sanity of the place, we would end up making it worse. So the best thing at the time of this fitna is to be careful with our tongues and talk more about peace and solidarity and look over uh, the things as much as we can and talk about the common things, talk about the peace because it's going to be fitna anyways. So may, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from having our input in that fitna. And may Allah save us from every citizen and involving any form of dissent, rebellion or any form of uh, law and order situation. So that's the best thing that we can do to strengthen these three countries. This is for every country, especially for Saudi Arabia. And what we know from uh, a hadith that Constantinople, Turkey won't be with us anymore very soon. So the worst thing in such a scenario is your own people, they have your, their thoughts against the government. So this, this is for the Turkish people too. Never ever try to rebel against your government, no matter what they do. No Islamic government in the world forces people to do shirk, forces people to, uh, to not uh, practice Islam. The Muslim governments don't do that. But even if they do, they are so worse, they reach to the point even then, don't obey them in that specific thing only. And don't rebel against all of the laws. That's what Islam teaches us. So that's the best thing that we can do to strengthen all these um, countries and inshallah that's how we can postpone the bad things that are going to come inshallah and that's how inshallah we expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy to fall upon us uh, even if you're feeling very bad and uh, not feeling good and we don't like our governments we don't rebel against them and that's the best thing.